Questions? We'll now move on to a statement by John Swinney on the Scottish Government response to the independent review of the circumstances surrounding the death of Bailey Gwynne. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement, and so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I would ask uh, members who wish to ask a question at the end of the statement to press their request to speak buttons whenever they wish. And I call on John Swinney. Presiding officer, there can be no greater tragedy for a parent than the loss of a child. I cannot imagine what the last year has been like for Bailey Gwynne's family. I want, on behalf of the Scottish Government, to express my heartfelt sympathies to them and to acknowledge the resilience and the dignity that they have shown since Bailey's untimely death. I know Bailey's school and community have also been deeply affected. Incidents like this have a profound and lasting impact and it is important to continue to support Bailey's friends and fellow pupils as they come to terms with their loss. I want to thank Cults Academy, Aberdeen City Council and Police Scotland for the prompt and appropriate action taken immediately following Bailey's death and since. In particular, Aberdeen City Council has responded effectively and swiftly, commissioning a review into the issues which gave rise to this incident and also in taking forward recommendations from that independent review. As that report makes clear, Bailey's death at school, whilst very rare, was a shocking and tragic incident. It was an unplanned and spontaneous conflict from which we must learn to minimise the risk of it happening to other children and young people. The resilience of schools in addressing the threat posed by weapons and violence is key, and I now wish to set out the Scottish Government's response to recommendations 11 and 12 from the review. Both recommendations have been considered carefully and ministers have been mindful of the need for a response that addresses what happened to Bailey and his family, but also would impact on all of Scotland's teachers, children and young people. I want to be absolutely clear, the safety of our children and young people at school is paramount. The possession of weapons in schools is absolutely unacceptable, as are threats and violence towards pupils and staff. I will respond to recommendation 12 first on behalf of the government with the Cabinet Secretary for Justice's full support. That recommendation asked us to explore further legislative controls that can be brought to bear on the purchase of weapons online. Presiding officer, I can confirm that we are doing so. The Scottish Government has the ability and indeed has legislated to provide additional controls on the possession and the sale of knives and offensive weapons. It is already illegal in Scotland to possess a knife in a public place without reasonable excuse. In March 2016, we increased the maximum penalties for offences of handling offensive weapons and knife possession from four to five years. Schools are included within the enforcement of these laws. It is also illegal to sell knives or similar products with blades or points to anyone under 18, except the sale of knives for domestic use being permitted to those over the age of 16. A local authority licence is required to supply knives to the general public, not for domestic purposes. This licensing scheme, which has no equivalent in England and Wales, aims to ensure that those who sell such knives do so responsibly. Anybody selling a knife to somebody below the minimum legal age risks a fine of up to £5,000. However, we know that in the case of Bailey's death, and indeed in the sale and purchase of many weapons these days, all those legal requirements and processes were circumvented through internet activity. We can act to change the law in Scotland on the purchase of knives, but as the purchase and delivery of knives crosses the borders of all UK countries, it is clear that the impact of a change only in Scotland would be limited. The most effective way to ensure more robust controls are in place would be through UK-wide action. Accordingly, the Cabinet Secretary for Justice has written to Sarah Newton the UK Government's Minister for Vulnerability, Safeguarding and Countering Extremism to seek agreement to a UK-wide approach to address concerns about the online sale and delivery of knives. I hope Parliament will agree with and support this approach and the Cabinet Secretary for Justice will update Parliament once a response is received. Turning to Recommendation 11, I want to reiterate that our approach to education places the health and well-being of children and young people at the heart of our curriculum. This begins with a whole school ethos, 
which emphasises the importance that positive relationships play in maintaining and building resilience, providing a protective environment, supporting vulnerability and addressing adversity. It is worth noting that the OECD Review of Scottish Education, published in December 2015, identified that Scottish students are resilient uh, as one of its positive developments in terms of those performing in the top quarter of international achievement. While our approach, backed by tough enforcement when necessary, is working, we must be prepared to do more. In the rare instance that violence does occur, we take these cases extremely seriously. The safety and well-being of everyone in our schools is our top priority, and where concerns are identified, robust action will be taken. I have sought stakeholders' views to inform our response to Recommendation 11, and I can advise Parliament that I will include new guidance on violence and weapons in schools within our refreshed guidance on school exclusions. This will be published this spring. The new guidance will make clear that any incident must be monitored and recorded at a local level. Indeed, Aberdeen has undertaken exemplary work to put such processes in place already. Monitoring and recording will enable local authorities to review and to improve local policies. This government's approach to the issue of violence has been consistent. By investing in early intervention, we can deter and divert people from harmful behaviours and can encourage positive relationships founded on respect, tolerance and inclusion. We have already invested significantly and will continue to do so in activity delivered in partnership with schools and a range of agencies and organisations. These will continue to be freely available to all schools. Since 2007, we have invested over £10.5 million in activity to reduce violence among young people, including over £3 million for No Knives, Better Lives, and over £7.6 million since 2008 in the National Violence Reduction Unit, including delivery of the Mentors in Violence Prevention Programme. This programme seeks to give young people the skills and confidence to safely intervene and to speak up to protect themselves and their friends against violence and abuse. We are now accelerating expansion of the MVP programme to reach an additional 30,000 young people in another 93 secondary schools across Scotland by March 2018. A total of 108 schools across 18 local authorities are currently engaging with the programme. Recommendation 11 also asked the Scottish Government to give consideration to amending the law in relation to searching pupils. I want to assure Parliament that I have given very careful consideration to this point and listened to advice from key stakeholders, especially teachers and their representatives. I can advise Parliament that I will not be taking this recommendation forward. Schools and local authorities in Scotland already have robust processes in place to address concerns about violence and weapons. These take into account health and safety issues and are based on risk assessments which enable staff to deal appropriately with situations where a weapon is suspected. In such circumstances, teachers may ask to carry out a consensual search. Changing the law would confer statutory powers on teachers, allowing them to compel a young person to be searched. Currently, outside of the prison system, this power is held only by the police. We would therefore be placing teachers on the same footing as police officers if we were to change the law. This would radically change the teacher-pupil relationship, which is often fundamental to encouraging young people to change challenging behaviour and potentially damage the school ethos and commitment to positive relationships that currently exist in Scottish schools. Given the recent debate on stop and search powers for Police Scotland in relation to children and young people and the necessary safeguards that are now in place, it is important that we take that consistent position into our schools and communities. We will continue with the current approach while strengthening and clarifying the position in our refreshed guidance on school exclusions. The guidance will be clear that consensual searches can continue, but if a teacher is uncertain or a young person will not cooperate by showing their belongings, then the police must be called immediately. Presiding officer, I want to reassure Parliament that the Justice Secretary and I have given careful consideration to these two recommendations. We have sought advice and listened to a range of views and experiences. 
we have taken seriously our responsibility to provide an adequate and appropriate response on behalf of government to the changes recommended to us. Most importantly of all, throughout our deliberations, we have kept at the forefront of our minds that a young man lost his life in one of our schools. We recognised it was incumbent on us to respond in a way which not only minimised the risk of that happening again, but also acknowledged all the circumstances which led to Bailey's death and the harm and hurt caused to his family. Taking all of this into account, I believe the response I've set out to recommendations 11 and 12 in the independent review is the correct one. It is a response that demonstrates this parliament and I believe this, this government and this parliament's absolute commitment to ensuring the safety and the well-being of all of our children and young people in the schools of Scotland. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions. We'll have about 20 minutes for questions. Uh, and if members uh, wish to ask, please press, press your request to speak button now. I call on Liz Smith. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I thank the Cabinet Secretary most specifically for his very measured and sincere tone with which the Scottish Conservatives would like to associate themselves. I understand what the Cabinet Secretary has said in relation to the debate about whether or not teachers should have additional powers to search for weapons. Specifically, the point made in the advice that's been provided to the Scottish Government that these additional powers would place teachers on the same footing as police officers and that this, by definition, would change the pupil-teacher relationship. I can therefore accept the reasons provided by the Scottish Government as to why additional powers would not be acceptable and why they would be inconsistent with other policies. And I think the decision will be warmly welcomed by teachers who I know had great concern about the possibility of extra powers. Notwithstanding that decision, the Cabinet Secretary makes clear that in certain circumstances, as now, teachers may be permitted to carry out a consensual search and that further guidance on this will be issued in the spring. Could I ask him to make sure that within that guidance it is abundantly clear whose consent must be sought, specifically whether, as well as the pupil, it would include the head teacher and the parent or guardian? And also, could I ask, is there any dis discussion that is taking place uh, with the GTC about teacher training on circumstances which hopefully will not be ever repeated again, but nonetheless have a possibility of repetition in schools? And may I draw Parliament to my register of interest as a member of the GTCS? Cabinet Secretary. Um, first of all, can I, uh, can I welcome the response of the Conservative Party and uh, the comments made by Liz Smith and um, uh, indicate that the remarks that she has made about the difficulties and the dilemma of the judgment to be applied here are exactly the questions with which the Justice Secretary and I have wrestled in the course of the last few weeks. Um, I, I want to make it absolutely clear that the when the government is formulating the guidance that is issued to schools, we will do so in consultation with the long-established mechanisms for dialogue on this subject, involving our discussions with the Scottish Advisory Group on Relationships and Behaviour in Schools, who are obviously actively consulted as part of this process. And that brings together the directors of education, uh, the Convention of Scottish Local Authorities, the teaching unions and a variety of other stakeholders to make sure that we have that, guide, that, that guidance can be um, very clear and uh, clearly to be followed by um, members of staff in our schools. That brings me on to the question of equipping our teachers to ensure that they are able to handle such situations and of course as part of the uh, the approach to initial teacher education, um, but then also in relation to the ongoing teaching of members of staff and, and the leadership positions within schools, it is important that teachers are equipped to handle the situations that they face. The emphasis that I've placed in my statement on the encouragement of positive behaviours is strategically for the government a very important commitment. And we think that accords with the ethos that is prevalent in Scotland's schools and it is an ethos that must be encouraged and nurtured but equally teachers must be able to be equipped to handle situations which we hope they don't have to face but regrettably in this circumstance some teachers have had to face. Um, so I, I give Liz Smith the assurance that uh, we will take due account of the need to ensure that teachers are properly trained for all circumstances and that the guidance that we issue is sufficiently clear uh, to address the issues that she has raised. Claire Baker to be followed by Jenny Gilruth. 
Uh, thank you, President Officer. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for an advice site of the statement. The death of Bailey Gwynn was tragic and our thoughts are with his family and friends. The decision to undertake a review and give all recommendations serious consideration is welcome and I appreciate the work already carried out by Aberdeen City Council. We support the Government's position on Recommendation 11 and their analysis of this proposal. Principally, our schools must be places for learning, parents must be confident their children are safe and supported by teachers who have the relevant and proportionate powers and responsibilities to do so. We support all efforts to restrict the purchase of weapons online throughout the UK and support the approach that has been made to the UK Government. However, could the Cabinet Secretary say more about what changes could be introduced to the law within Scotland while accepting it would be limited, um, as would UK restrictions in the context of worldwide online sales? And finally, recommendation 20 of the report depends on the completion of the Scottish Government's Child Protection System Review, which was due to report in December. We are still awaiting its publication. Can the Cabinet Secretary update Parliament on when this will be published? Cabinet Secretary. First of all, can I welcome Claire Baker's uh, commitment on behalf of the Labour Party and um, their understanding and support for the position that we take. And the way that Claire Baker described our schools is exactly the way that I would describe them, as well as places of learning, uh, of safety for our young people and uh, an environment of support uh, by the teaching profession. And that is the, the approach that we have to work to sustain in the, in the context of these recommendations. In connection with the... Um, I also welcome her uh, support for the efforts that the Justice Secretary is taking forward in trying to get to a UK-wide position. Um, we have come to the conclusion that that would be the most effective way of trying to take as much action as we could to address the deficiencies in um, online uh, security around the purchasing of, light, of, of knives. And we think that t taking forward actions in Scotland, particularly around requiring more stringent measures on age verification, could be undertaken and could be applied. But the danger is that we would not be able to capture all of the potential sources of um, knives to be dispatched um, on, uh, fr from online sales. Although even within a United Kingdom measure, we have to accept that that may not be possible because of the nature of business traffic that is currently un uh, undertaken. So we, we will explore with the UK government how we can most effectively strengthen uh, these provisions and as I said in my statement, the Justice Secretary um, will report to, Cabinet, uh, to, to Parliament on that question and ensure that the updates we receive from our dialogue with the UK Government are reported to Parliament. Um, on our final issue, um, the Government is still giving consideration to this issue and um, reports will be published in due course. Jenny Gilruth to be followed by Ross Thompson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I remind members that I am the Parliamentary Liaison Officer to the Cabinet Secretary for Education. Uh, to ask the Cabinet Secretary what the Government is doing to support schools in developing robust security and safety measures which ensure the well-being of all pupils and staff. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, much of this activity relates to ensuring that we create um, a safe ethos within individual schools. So the, uh, the proactive measures that we take, such as through the work of the Violence Reduction Unit, the mentoring programme, uh, the, the, the communication of the no, 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 knives, no Knives Better Lives campaign are all designed to create that positive environment in which young people can be supported effectively within our education system. Uh, I've set out within my statement today additional measures that we will put in place to strengthen the guidance so there is more um, effective and assiduous reporting of incidents and as a consequence more effective and assiduous follow-up to those incidents to ensure that we learn lessons and are constantly trying to make our schools as safe as they possibly can be uh, to protect the well-being of young people in our country. Ross Thompson to be followed by Lewis MacDonald. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I declare an interest as a current and serving councillor on Aberdeen City Council. As a North East member representing the community of cults, I know how deeply affected the school community and the wider community have been by the tragic death of Billy Gwynn over a year ago. It is welcome that following the publication of Andrew Lowe's report, Aberdeen City Council agreed to a new strategy 
aimed at preventing knives and other weapons from getting into schools and acted swiftly to implement the report's recommendations. So will the Scottish Government work to ensure that this exemplar work carried out by Aberdeen City Council in response will be rolled out by other councils in Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. I, I have already indicated um, my appreciation of the work that has been undertaken uh, swiftly and timidly by Aberdeen City Council. Um, the Council has um, uh, addressed the issues uh, raised in the independent report uh, very swiftly and effectively. There is good learning to be undertaken here, and obviously, what is um, what has been developed by Aberdeen City Council is practice that will be significantly influential in the guidance that the government looks at with the uh, in the further discussions that we have uh, before its publication later this spring. Lewis Macdonald to be followed by Fulton McGregor. Thank you very much. As the parent of a former pupil at Cults Academy, I want to thank the Cabinet Secretary for acknowledging the impact of Bailey Gwynne's death on the school and the community, and above all, the family who have acted with the utmost dignity in the most difficult of circumstances. He has, I think, already confirmed the discussions he has had with Aberdeen City Council. Will he confirm further that the model of joint working with the other public sector bodies involved in this case has a direct relevance uh, to other such cases uh, where uh, different public authorities have a responsibility and those responsibilities intersect. And if indeed the uh, implementation of recommendations for Aberdeen City Council and the other public bodies is indeed uh, well on course, uh, will he uh, tell us whether there is any further role that the Scottish Government uh, expects to play in supporting the, the Council on those matters, particularly in relation to the school and the family? Cabinet Secretary. I think the, um, first of all, I, I, I readily acknowledge the, the impact of uh, this tragedy on Cults Academy, uh, on the community, and um, most especially on Bailey Gwynne's family. And uh, I think the school community has handled what is uh, an almost unimaginable circumstance um, with all of the um, the dignity and the grace that one could ever hope to summon in such circumstances. Mr Macdonald is absolutely correct that none of these responses take place in isolation. They must be the product of good collaborative working between different public organisations. And I can confirm, um, having discussed these issues with the Director of Education at Aberdeen City Council, um, just how appreciative she is of the work with Police Scotland and particularly the family liaison officers who undertake a, a most extraordinary task on our behalf in such very difficult circumstances to draw all of this together. Um, it's important that that partnership remains in place and I'm, from my conversations with the Director of Education last week, I am absolutely sure that is the case and obviously the Scottish Government will work closely with Aberdeen City Council on taking forward um, any areas where we can be of assistance in advancing this agenda. Um, clearly, uh, a lot of that joint working will be reflected in the guidance that the Government brings forward, um, and we have been given um, some significant assistance in developing our thinking on that by the actions of Aberdeen City Council on this issue. Fulton MacGregor to be followed by Liam MacArthur. Thank you, President Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary provide more information about the No Knives, Better Lives campaign and how it has impacted on the prevalence of knife crime in communities where the programme has been operated. Camera Secretary. The President Officer, the um, No Knives Better Lives campaign has been in existence since 2009, and it's been applied uh, across 19 local authorities at the present moment. And the consequence of that activity is to drive a significant reduction in the existence of knife crime and it's particularly focused on changing behaviours amongst uh, young people particularly in the 11 to 18 age group and we've seen significant progress in that respect and we look to sustain that with the commitments the government makes today. Liam MacArthur to be followed by Julian Martin. Thank you, President Officer. Can I uh, thank the Cabinet Secretary for the early sight of his statement and associate myself 
uh, with his remarks and indeed the remarks of other colleagues about the dignity shown uh, by Bailey Gwynne's family at what has been an exceptionally difficult time for them. In relation to the response to Recommendation 11, can I warmly welcome the approach um, that has been taken? I, I do not underestimate uh, the balance of issues that had to be weighed up. But would he accept that going down the route of giving teachers statutory powers of search uh, would have run the risk of undermining confidence, trust and relationships between staff and pupils that arguably could have made uh, school environments more difficult in terms of dealing with challenging um, behaviour? And in relation to the online sales, is there any data or evidence um, that would show where online sales are coming from, one would imagine it's probably international, but within the limits of the powers he has, I would certainly support the approach made to the UK Government. Cabinet Secretary. C can I thank Mr MacArthur for his support and say that the, 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 the judgment that I arrived at on Recommendation 11 was essentially by wrestling with the dilemmas that he put forward there. And my judgment was that we would have potentially recast fundamentally the relationship between teachers and pupils in a way that was completely at odds with the approach of our education system. But we would also um, have created um, an approach on search powers which would have been at odds with the prevailing direction of the very good work that the Justice Secretary has led um, and been informed by the, um, the working group that was led by John Scott and which is a uh, which has created the, um, the, 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 the guidance that Parliament is now currently scrutinising on this very question. So I think we, we've taken a decision which is rooted in our views about how the education system should develop and our consistent approach on stop and search. In response to his question on online sales, it's a more difficult question for me to pin down. Um, but uh, in my answer to Claire Baker, uh, essentially I accepted that there is a difficulty here because of the nature of the international market. And we've accepted some part of that in the sense of trying to pursue a UK cooperation to try to cast the net as wide as we possibly can do. But I don't underestimate the fact that the, um, there could be um, dangers because of international activity. I think it strengthens the argument for saying that uh, retailers must be mindful of their, of their conduct and their behaviour in relation to the sale of knives and the dispatch of knives, because we know from the report that was undertaken in this case that internet activity was involved and also um, the, um, the, 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 there was a certain amount of approach taken to uh, essentially circumvent the controls that were put in place in relation to purchasing. So, we, we have to be mindful of the fact that not all of this area activity can be policed by the Scottish Government, but what I've tried to reassure Parliament about today is that we will do as much as we possibly can do to address that directly. Julian Martin to be followed by Douglas Ross. Thank you, President Officer. Cabinet Secretary, I'm sure your statement will be welcomed by families and teachers in their school across Scotland. Um, in particular, the forthcoming guidance. Can the Cabinet Secretary advise what input teachers have had or will have into the drafting of this guidance? Cabinet Secretary. Um, the guidance um, is developed in consort with the Scottish Advisory Group on Relationships and Behaviour in Schools, which brings together the teaching unions, the Association of Directors of Education in Scotland and the Convention of Scottish Local Authorities. Uh, and we also um, will be very mindful of other input that we take from key stakeholders like the Violence Reduction Unit working with the government. So we'll make sure that the views and the input of teachers um, is at the, at the core of designing the guidance that's rolled out to schools in Scotland. Douglas Ross to be followed by Colin Beattie. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware that on page 27 of the Independent Review, uh, there is a quote from the Chief Superintendent which stated that at the time of the review, the local force had been called out to six incidents at local schools, including three in Murray at Bucky, Keith and Elgin. Uh, however, the statement also concluded that all incidents were reported by school staff to the police. Given that statement, uh, recommendation three of the report still went on to say that Police Scotland shall be notified of each and every incident of weapons possession of which the school become aware. 
Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, was that recommendation included because there are still concerns that some incidents are not reported by school staff to the police? And what more can be done by the Scottish Government to ensure that each and every incident is reported by school staff to the police? Cabinet Secretary. The, um, what I said in my statement um, is that the guidance will be clear that consensual searches can continue but if a teacher is uncertain or a young person will not cooperate by showing their belongings, then the police must be called immediately. So there is a, a, a very direct um, relationship between the importance of involving the police where there is um, a suspicion of a weapon being concealed that is not, um, over which there is not cooperation in undertaking that search. So uh, the, 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 the guidance that the government puts out will address these issues um, as part of creating uh, an approach within our schools which tries to resolve issues, um, in the first case by encouraging young people not to carry knives in the first place, and all of the effort will be put in to, um, to, to, to promote that message, that strong contribution, contribution to the ethos of our schools. There will then be guidance about the ability of teachers to exercise uh, control uh, and to uh, undertake consensual searches if uh, a young person is prepared to cooperate. And if that is not successful, then obviously to involve the police, as is the appropriate way for such matters to be handled, consistent with the approach that I have set out today. Colin Beattie to be followed by Daniel Johnson. I welcome the news that uh, Scottish ministers want to see the online purchase and receipt of offensive weapons outlawed. Can the Cab Cabinet Secretary advise when he expects to receive a response from the UK Minister and what action Scottish Ministers will take if the UK Government refuses to act to address this issue? Cabinet Secretary. The Cabinet Secretary uh, for Justice wrote to the Home Office on the 18th of January, so we'll, um, we'll wait some time before we, we hear a response. Um, obviously, we hope that we can encourage the UK Government to work with us on this question and to find practical ways of addressing it. Um, if we are unsuccessful in that respect, then obviously I come back to my response that I gave to Claire Baker, that the government will do as much as it can within the confines of our powers and responsibilities uh, to ensure that we can be as effective as possible in this respect. Daniel Johnson to be followed by Claire Adamson. Uh, amongst the recommendations made in the independent report to Aberdeen City Council were a recommendation 10 that they work with the Ben Kinsella Trust on uh, violence reduction policies and recommendation 13 that they consult with Respect Me regarding anti-bullying uh, policies. I note and welcome the comments that the Cabinet Secretary made around uh, violence reduction measures and programmes. But following on and, and by extension from these recommendations, what contact has the Scottish Government had with these organisations and others around these matters? And what revisions and improvements have been made to the violence reduction programmes uh, in light of the tragic circumstances of Bailey Gwynne's death? Cabinet Secretary. The, the violence reduction programmes uh, have been long-standing programmes, uh, well developed and uh, I think very successful in reducing um, crimes of violence amongst young people and particularly around knife crime and the statistics speak for themselves in that respect. So I think the, the programmes have got a lot to, to, to assist us with in this respect. On Mr Johnson's two points about uh, recommendations 10 and 13, uh, in relation to um, Respect Me, obviously Respect Me Act uh, in, in taking forward work on the government's behalf in working to tackle the issue of bullying amongst young people. Um, as Mr Johnson will know, there is um, some guidance on, on bullying strategies that is currently being consulted upon. We're engaging with the Equal Opportunities Committee of Parliament on that, uh, on that question. And I hope to draw matters to a conclusion on that approach um, once I hear further from the Equal Opportunities Committee on their thinking. But I can assure um, Mr Johnson that we work very closely with organisations um, uh, such as Respect Me focused on um, uh, working to tackle bullying within our schools and to provide the most effective support to assist in that respect. And Claire Adamson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I... Can uh, commend my condolences to the friends and family of 
Bailey Gwynn as well as my colleagues this afternoon. Uh, Cabinet Secretary, um, with reference to the answers you've already given regarding um, uh, the consultation with the teaching unions and with um, other um, stakeholders across Scotland and also the information about the consistency of recording the data. Can I ask what steps you, you will take to ensure that there is a whole Scotland approach to this across the 32 local authorities and what support the unions would be able to offer in uh, achieving that goal? Cabinet Secretary. The, the guidance that we put out will obviously apply across all uh, local authority areas and um, I uh, have been greatly encouraged by the degree of common thinking and support that's been expressed by the Convention of Scottish Local Authorities for the approach that we are taking um, and the, the, the approach that's been also supported by the Association of Directors of Education in Scotland. So I think um, on, on this question, uh, the existence of guidance that has an applicability right across the country and the willing uh, participation of a range of different organisations will help us to take forward what's an important agenda to safeguard the well-being of young people in Scotland's schools. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. Members, that concludes our statement. We'll now move on to a debate on Motion 3748 in the name of Fiona Hislop, and we'll just take a few seconds to change seats.